Okay, take a seat. Let's start. So, good afternoon, everybody. Let's start. Okay, so last time I explained addition and subtraction. So I'm gonna make very quick revision. I think there is one example or two I didn't explain. I'm gonna go through them. After that, I'm gonna move to multiplication and division. And, th and these are all the arithmetic instructions we have. So we have only four, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, okay? So that's what I explained last time, guys. I told you we, for addition, we actually have here, as you see here, for addition, we have this instruction. Okay. Yeah, I think the pin is not working. Let's bury the pin. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It seems to me not sure it's, it's not working. The thing, so. Anyway. So last time I told you we have here add in instruction. Okay. Uh, sorry, let me go back. Yeah. So here we have add in instruction. Uh, uh, and also we have add as I told you in me in most of the instruction we have, we you can you have two versions. One version without s and another one with with s. Uh, not here I'm explaining for addition. But this is actually applicable to most of the instructions we have. I told you before, th these two instructions are doing exactly the same thing. The difference is this instruction is going to up up update the flag, but this one does not update the flag. This is the only difference, okay? Same thing for subtraction. We have here subtract, and if you have subtract as also, and I give you a lot of examples here, like, for example, as you see here, uh, so you here you you are gonna add r1 plus r2 stores the result in r0 here you are gonna add r1 plus three number three stores the result in r0 okay by the way i told you before uh, you cannot this immediate value you can you cannot put it here okay so the third if you have an immediate value it has to be the third uh, uh, brand not the second one okay so anyway also i told you here we have another one, another instruction here, ADC, addition with carry. So this one, what is the difference between this one, this addition with carry and the normal addition? The exactly, they are doing exactly the same thing. The only difference is that this one is going to add carry as well. The carry is one flip-flop, one bit. This bit can be zero or one. So if it's zero, so I'm going to add zero. And in this case, actually, this instruction will be similar to this one, right? And if it is one, it's gonna add one. So whatever the value of the carry is gonna be added. Okay. So, and I told you why you understand you have a number in one register, you have another number in, in another register, and you wanna add these two numbers together. That's okay. You can understand that. But it may be, or I need to clarify why I need to add the carry. And I give you example here. Uh, and here I told you. Uh, all the instructions we have are for, th are for 32 bit numbers. For 32 bit number, okay? So you can add 32 bit to 32 bits, okay? So the question is that what if your number is bigger than 32 bits? Okay? The answer is, is still you can do, it. for example, here, my number, I'm assuming the number is 64 bits, or it can be more, whatever it is. So can I do the addition? The answer is yes, you can, 
but it, uh, it you cannot do it using one instruction you have to use more than one instruction and that's exactly what happened so here this is i can add 32 plus 32 this is normal addition but here when i do this addition i have to add the carry as well if there is a carry resulted if the carry resulted from the first addition should be taken into account here is that okay uh, and here when, for this instruction for this instruction here it has to be add s you have to put s here why because i need to update the flex because i'm going to use the carry so actually i can do it this way okay i'm assuming the 64 bits here uh, is, is stored in r0 r1 uh, and here the, the second number is in r2 and r3 so uh, as you see here i can do addition here at s okay so if whatever carry resulted from here if it is zero or one it's gonna it's gonna be it is uh, stored in the carry flag and this instruction is gonna add the carry flag to these two numbers is that okay guys i told you same thing for subtraction same thing however in case of subtraction if there is a borrow if you borrow from here okay that is why we have two instruction we have normal subtraction so what this instruction is gonna do is gonna subtract r2 from r0 stores the result in r4 and because you put s here so the, this instruction is going to update the carry the carry flag and i told you before if you remember in case of subtraction the carry flag we call it a borrow flag why because if there is a borrow if you borrow okay so the carry flag is going to be one otherwise it is zero you understand what i'm saying i explained it before so here so in the next instruction here what i have to do is it should be R1 minus R3 minus the carry flag. So that if you borrow, I have to subtract it, okay? Anyway, I give you an example for 64. What if this instruction is if is more than 64? Yeah, it's the same idea. You can, you can use the same idea. So this is normal addition or subtraction. This is su sub subtract with carry or borrow, and this one subtract to, and if you have more, so this one has to be subtract with, with borrow, subtract, subtract to borrow, subtract to borrow, and so on. So that if there is a borrow or if there is a carry, you have to take it into account. Okay, guys? I want to tell you something important for the purpose of this course. 32 bits operation should be enough. Okay? So I'm not going to, I don't think we are going to need to do more than 32 bit operation. However, for, for everything, for multiplication, for uh, for lo logic operation, for everything, 32 bits should be okay. So why why I am mentioning this one? I just want to tell you, I want to tell you, although this processor of, for 32, we can actually we can actually do everything, okay? Everything we can do it in more than 32. However, it's not using one instruction. You have to use more than one instruction. What do you mean by everything? I mean, for example every instruction you can do it in 64 uh, for multiplication but you have to use like an algorithm or you have to use more than one instruction to do that okay so for everything you can look online you can find some if you need for sure but that's that's what i want you to understand i want you to understand if a processor 32 bit that doesn't mean if you want to use it more than 32 you can no you can but you have to use more one than one in instruction okay guys any questions and also i need to justify why that's why i'm explaining it why we have add with carry why we have uh, that's why they created this instruction otherwise it, i i don't think it's in it's not going to be useful in, in any other scenario okay anyway also if i go back here i told you here this is for subtraction uh this one uh he, the last two here reverse the subtraction reverse the subtraction so the normal subtraction is going to subtract as you see here, the last operand number three from operand number two, as you see here. However, this one is going to be reversed. So it's going to be this one minus this one, as you see here. Okay, how this one, okay, let me finish this. How this one can be useful? For example, if I want to uh, do subtraction, R, R4 minus five, for example. So I, I can use this one. You can put here R4 and you can put here number five. However, if I want to do five, minus r4 how i can do this one okay so it has to be here because you cannot as i have just mean as i said before you cannot put five here this one has to be a register you cannot put five here and r4 here you cannot do that 
but you can use the reverse here so that you can put here R4 or five or whatever the register is, and you could put the number here. In this case, it's going to be a number minus register. Yes. Yeah, could you use the subtract carry with the object flag in the first one? Yeah, you can if you need to, if you if you need to do something like that. But I don't know why you want to do this way. So okay, if I go back here, um, okay. So here I want to add these two together. That's okay. However, here I want to add these two plus the carry resulted from here. You, you answered what I'm saying? So I need to do that. So say it again, you, what, what you want to do? So with the, on the first instruction, you have the, uh, the app with the update. Could you use the app with the carry and the update? Yeah, because this S, S is going to update the carry. Yeah, sure. If, if you put it without S, it's not going to work. Because this one is not going to update the carry. Have I answered your question or still you answer question? No, no, go ahead. So what you want to do here? It's not an answer. That's okay. So anyway, so yeah, so if you want to use this in a structure, uh, maybe you want to say this instruction should be should come after this instruction all the time. You don't need to do it, it doesn't need to be this way, but in order to make it to be logical, in order to be true, it has to be this way because I need the carry result from this to this here. So now, uh, so here, I don't need to explain this one for sure. We already have had one lab about this one. We, uh, about the flex, I explained it before. Uh, uh, yeah, when you add letter, uh, uh, when you add S, you are gonna update the flex. Here, if you, if, you have, if you have this program, for example, in C language, and you wanna do the same thing in assembly, so you have here three variables. So we have X, Y, and Z, three variables, okay? So uh, you can use the registers for these variables or you can use memory locations. It's up to you, this is your decision. For example, if I decide R0 is gonna be X. So the variable X, the value of X is gonna be stored in R0. I'm gonna use R1 to represent Y. I'm gonna use R2 to represent Z in this case. If I want to do it this way, I can use I can use this instruction this way, okay? Because this is z, this is x, this is y. Uh, someone someone can decide something else. Uh, I'm going to use memory locations instead of registers, okay? So yes. So what happens here? Um, yeah. Also, I want to tell you this this addition in instruction. It should work if your numbers are signed or unsigned. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it matters. Okay, as as you will see right now when I come to division. Sometimes I'm gonna say if your numbers are signed, you have to use this instruction. If it is unsigned, you have to use this one. But for this addition, it doesn't matter if your number signed or unsigned. In both cases, it's gonna work. Okay, that's why this one this one is signed the number. That's why if it is signed numbers, I'm gonna use the same addition. Right. If it is unsigned numbers, unsigned numbers. So in this case, I still, still, I can use the same instruction. Now, as I told you, uh, for this variable, I can decide to use memory locations, as you see here. So actually, so the address of x is stored in R zero, not the value of x, not the value of x, the address of x. Is that okay? The address of y it is stored in R one. The address of z is stored in R two. Okay. So now look what I'm going to do here. Number one, I have to read the value pointed by R0, which is the value of X. Is that okay? So I'm going to read the value pointed by R0, okay? So, uh, so, so R0 itself is the address. If you put it between brackets this way, this is the value, okay? So here you read the value of X, but I put it in R3. Same thing here, you have to take, you have to read the second one, put it in R4. 
simply because I cannot add two memory location together, and now I can add register plus register store the result in a, in a register, which is R5, okay? But here in this example, I want to store the result in memory location. So I have to use the store here to return it back to memory location. Any questions? I think I mentioned it several times. All the instruction we have don't work directly on, on, on memory. You have to read, you have to put it to the register, you have to do uh, a calculation, and then you have to store back in memory because the instruction don't work because the hardware is not good. That's what you keep in mind. Everything here related to the hardware. The hardware, you have, you have to read something, put it, because this register is connected, wired, is wired to LU. But the memory memory is not connected, it's not wired to the LU. Okay, any questions? Anyway, I give you a, here a, just a very simple example. Uh, I think you can just go through this example. It's not difficult. So here you are going to read, you have three variables, A, B, C. As I said before here, you are going to read the address of A. Now you are going to read the value, put it in R2. I can do the same thing for B. This one is the address of B. This is the value of B. Now you can do addition. Okay, and then I'm gonna store the result. Someone asked me why you added S here. Actually, I don't need, but but even if I put it, it's not gonna hurt. You understand what I'm saying? So this one is gonna update the flex. I do it doesn't matter for me because I'm not gonna use the flex after it, but that's okay. You can add or add this also. But if you need the flex, you must use add S if you need the flex. But if you don't need the flex, it's, if I'm not going to use the carry flag after or any flag after this instruction, so it doesn't matter if you use add or add this. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Any question, guys, before I go to multiplication and division? Okay. So here, the same way, we have here instructions to do multiplication, and we have also instructions to do a division. Okay. So, uh, so let's see what instructions we have. So the first instruction we have it here is called MUL, MUL, or MUL. So here, as you see here, you have to put three branches here, as you see. So what happens here, you are gonna multiply this register by this register, and then you are gonna store the result in this register, as you see here, okay? And that's, I think that's what you are gonna do tomorrow. In tomorrow's lab, you are gonna multiply this one by this one and store the result in. So here, actually, you are gonna multiply 32 bits by 32 bits, and the result is gonna be stored in 32 bits. Okay, guys? Yeah. So, for sure, uh, there is a risk to get the wrong answer because in multiplication, the number is gonna get bigger. You understand what I'm saying? So here I'm multiplying 32 bits in 32 bits. Maybe if the, re if the result needs more than 32 bits, you are gonna get the wrong result. You understand what I'm saying? Anyway, so second one, MLA, this one. So this one actually was gonna happen. You, maybe, maybe this is, among maybe this is the only instruction or very few instructions that needs to four brands as you see it very few instruction needs a need for a brand so what's going to happen here is as you see here guys i'm going to multiply these two together as you see here in this equation sorry i'm going to multiply these two together together rn times rm and then i'm going to add to this one and the result will come to here very interesting instruction because this instruction can do multiplication and addition. So it's gonna multiply two registers, add to one register, store the result in, in one register. Very interesting uh, because uh, one of the main problem with assembly, you have to write too much code. So if you have one instruction that can do all of that, just make it, uh, in, if, if you need to do, instead of using two instructions uh, to multiply and add, this one is gonna do it. Okay? Same thing is for this one, but here instead of addition, it's gonna subtract. So we are gonna multiply uh, this register to this register, subtract this one, the result is stored in RD. Remember uh, here, the result, all in, in all cases, the result is 32 bits, okay? In all of these cases, okay? We have, we have another version of multiplication instruction, we call it long multiplication. This is the way we call it long, simply because that, Still, still, I'm gonna multiply 32 bits by 32 bits. So this similar to this case, I'm gonna multiply 32 bits by 32 bits. But the difference is that the result is gonna be stored in 64. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put bigger space for the result. Okay. So as you see here, guys, here we have four, we have four four operands here. So what this instruction is gonna do is gonna multiply this one by this one. Okay. 
and there's so 32 bits by 32 bits and then it's going to store the result in in these two registers okay so uh so so it's going to store it in in, in 30 in, in a big space in in in, in two words okay so this instruction the first uh, sorry this register is the first one here this is the least least significant word this one is the most significant word you know uh, i already explained before this significant and most significant so what it's a word that comes first is least significant the second one so you have two words okay least significant and then most significant okay uh okay so we have two of them here in case of long multiplication we have two 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 uh, we have two instructions here one for unsigned and the other one for signed okay so if you we have another one here so this one is similar to this one everything is the same you are going to multiply 32 bits by 32 bits. the result is 64 bits the result is going to be stored in two registers as you see here uh by the way this is just a general name so you can hear you have to put register r0 r1 and so on okay so but if your numbers are unsigned uh, you have to use this one if your numbers are signed you have to use this one okay uh we have also uh, we have here um these two instructions here so what happens here guys also this is interesting instruction this one is called to multiply with accumulate accumulate so what happens here is that we're going to do multiplication similar to this one but what's what's happening here you do multiplication it's through the result here no this one is gonna multiply add add the result to this one and then store the result here that's what as you see here so i'm gonna multiply 32 by 32 okay and and then i'm gonna add i'm gonna add the result to the original value here in this uh, these two registers then i'm gonna store them here okay so it's like that's why it's called accumulate accumulate because you are gonna add multiply whatever you get you are gonna add it to whatever there okay again you have two of them one for uh one for unsigned and one for okay let's see let's uh, see some examples so here for example if i say just mul multiplication r6 r4 r2 so what this one is going to do you are going to multiply r2 times r4 then you are going to start the uh, store the result in r6 okay same thing here as but this this one is going to multiply plus you are going to multiply these two plus you are going to add this one store the result here okay here you subtract as i explained before so this is just this is the same thing as i explained before but here we use just general terms here i give you exact exact registers okay guys any questions? Okay. So for tomorrow's lab, you can just use this multiply. It should be easy. Just use this one, okay, to do the multiplication. And this one can be used for signed or unsigned. Should be should be okay. As the last instructions we have here is division, divide when you divide. Okay. So here in division. Oh, okay, so here for division, we have here guys. So you have here, we have two instructions, uh, one for signed numbers, other one for unsigned numbers. So we have two, okay? So in this case, uh, as I told you before, the processor doesn't know if your number signed or unsigned. This is something you have to consider when you write your own program. You know if the number are signed or signed. So when you, when you write your programs, if your numbers uh, are signed and you wanna use, and, and you wanna use, uh, division you have to use this one if your numbers are unsigned so you have to use this one okay how, how it works is very simple you are going to divide uh, rn divided by rm so you divide you divide this one by this one okay rn divided by rm and then it stores the result here okay very simple the same thing here but this is for signed and this one is for unsigned okay so here uh yeah as you see here for example if i do something like that so 
R0, so actually what's, what this instruction is going to do, R0 should equal R1 divided by, by R2. Okay, guys? Any question? Yes. What's the difference between the ones on the table and the ones up here with the brackets around? It's the same. Yeah, this one general is here. I use general format RM, RN, but here is this is a specific registers. Is that so it never uses those brackets that are shown at the top? Ah, you mean this one? Yeah. Yeah, this braces, okay. This means it's optional. You you may not need it. You know when when you know when you don't need it. You don't need it if if this if this is R0 and this also R0, if it's the same. So in this case, I can write it only one time. Or you can write it too if you want. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So if it is R0, R0, you can write it twice. That's okay. Okay. Or you can only, it can, so this part it can be optional if the destination is similar to this one. Okay. One more thing here I want to explain. When I do division, and that's what you should see tomorrow. When I do division, for example, if you divide, if you divide five, five divided by two, what is the result? 2.5, right? However, this instruction is not going to give you 2.5, okay? Uh, you know, when I divide 5 divided by 2, we should have quotient and we should have remainder. You know what I mean? Quotient and remainder. So the quotient here is 2, okay? Remainder is 1. What do you mean by quotient and remainder? Okay, I'm going to tell you what I mean. When you divide 5 divided by 2, what it means? It means I want to make groups of 2. So I have 5. I want to make groups of two. So this is one group. These two can make one group. These two are going to make a second group. So now you have two groups, right? This is the remainder. This one is this only one, right? So it cannot be in a group. That's what we call remainder. That's why if you divide five by two, I can make two groups, two groups of two for sure, right? And then I'm going to have one remainder, okay? So this is quotient and remainder. Or sometimes we call it mood, the mood, M O D, right? Um, so what I want to tell you, this, this instruction is going to give you the quotient. So tomorrow, if you, if you divide something like that, five divided by two, you're going to see two, right? So you are, all of you are going to see the quotient. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So what if I need, uh, how, what if I want to get the remainder, how I can get the remainder? Okay. Again, this instruction is going to give you the quotient. And I'm going to explain later. Yes, yeah, sometimes you need to get the remainder. So how can you get the remainder? In this case, you need, you need you, what you can do, uh, you, you can do some computation to get the remainder. I'm going to tell you how. Look here, guys. If 5 divided by 2 equal to, this is a quotient. What it means? It means I have two, I have two group of 2. So if I multiply this 2 times 2, right? And then five, take away the four, you are going to get the remainder. So all what you have to do, guys, the result you got from here, you should multiply by this one, then subtract the result from five, and by this way you can get the remainder, okay? So, and that's what I did here. You can write this once because I, they are not in your slide, so I added them later. So what, as you see here, guys, I'm gonna make division, normal division, as you see here. So it's gonna be R6 divided by R7, okay? And the result is gonna, the quotient is gonna be in R0, okay? And then you can multiply after that. And if you wanna get the remainder, you have to multiply uh, as a result by this one. So I have to multiply uh, R0 by R7, as you see here, okay? And then you have to subtract uh, this value from R6, and that's what I did here. So I did here, here, in, if I use this number, just to make it easy, I'm gonna use these numbers. So here, uh, uh, actually uh, R7 here is, is the two, this two, okay? R0 is the quotient here, two. So I'm gonna multiply two times two, they are four. And then you have to subtract four, uh, five, five, five minus four, okay? By this way, you can get the limit. Anyway, okay, guys, any questions? Again, I, I told you for this course, uh, it's okay to do, th we only need 32-bit operation. But again, I want to just tell you, you can do, for example, here, uh, I just want to tell you, you still, if your numbers are bigger than 32, still we can do it, okay? For example, here in this example, I'm assuming I have two numbers, they are 64 bits. 
So for example, if you have this two number, uh, this 64 bit number is stored in these two registers. We have 62 bit, uh, 64 bit number stored in these two registers. So I wanna multiply 60, 64 by 64, and then I wanna store the result in 64, okay? First of all, we don't have one instruction to do that, but I can use multiple instructions, okay? Anyway, I don't care. So I don't care too much about 64. I just want you to know, just in case if you need, if you need to do, if you, use a, if you are using a processor and this processor is doing operations on, on a certain number of bits. And if you wanna do, if you wanna do uh, the, the same operation in a bigger number, yes, you can do it. But as you see here, you have to use, so, so actually the result should equal to this equation here. So you have all what you have to do, you just implement it. So anyway, so I don't care about this slide. I just wanna tell you uh, that uh, you can do every everything, even division, everything in 64 bits, but we're not gonna do for this course for sure. 32 bits should be enough, but it, it, there is a way to do it if you want, if you need, okay? Anyway, any questions? So now I'm done with arithmetic operation. Now I'm gonna move to logic, logic instructions, okay? So you know from, uh, uh, from a digital system, uh, logic instruction and XOR, when you do bit by bit and bit by bit XOR, okay? So what I wanna tell you here, guys, and this section is gonna be completely different from the previous section. And the previous section, if I have a register, I'm gonna look at this register as number, as number, you add number to number. But here, when we talk about logic operation, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna use it as a number, but I'm gonna use it like bits, okay? So we are gonna do bit by bit and operation, bit by bit, XOR and so on. So it's not gonna be one, one whole number. I'm gonna add number to number or multiply number. No, it's not gonna be that, okay? It's gonna be just uh, a bunch of bits. So you are gonna do, you are gonna work on bit by bit. Okay, uh, logic operation. So first of all, what logic operations we have, as you see here, guys, we have an instruction for end. This is bit, bit wise, bit by bit, okay? You can do end operation bit by bit. I wanna just write something, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna see another program. Yeah, let me try if I, this one is going to allow me to write. Don't, okay. So, yeah, I, uh, I think it's a problem. The problem is not from is not from the PowerPoint. It's from the computer. You know. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, guys. So here, uh, so number one, you can do end and uh, logic end bit by bit end. Okay. And this is how it looks like, guys, similar to what we did before. You can put here three registers, or it can be, this one can be a number, okay, not a register. Uh, so here, what this one is gonna do, is gonna do end. This is 32 bits, 32 bits is gonna do end bit by bit end, and store the result here. Is that okay? I'm good for sure. Just understand why, how, sorry, how it works, and then for sure, this is very, this is very important. Uh, instruction, we're gonna use it all the time, very important. Uh, so here, uh, you know, in C language, in C language, if you wanna do bit by bit end, you have to use this symbol, uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, ampersand, okay? So in C language, this, this is the symbol we're gonna use in C language as, as you will see. Uh, okay, yes. Okay. So I'm gonna explain for sure. Let's let's see how end works first. Okay. For example, if you have a if you have a and b this way, if you do end zero and zero is zero, zero and one is zero, one and zero is zero, one and one is one. That's what, that's what what you know, right? So I'm gonna tell you this truth truth table in a different way. Okay. 
I'm going to tell you how. Uh, and I like I like to explain this way because I'm going to need it this way. Okay, so let me explain. So for and for and, if one input is zero, the other the result is zero regardless of the other inputs. Okay. So for and, if one one input is zero, as you see here, for example, if I look at this M, this is zero. So I don't care about whatever there because it is zero and zero. So I'm gonna get zero here. Okay. So this one is zero. So what regardless, you are gonna get zero here. The only way I'm gonna get one. Okay. So for and for and, uh, if one input is zero, it's guaranteed I'm gonna get zero. Is that okay? Uh, But, okay, so I told you in end, if I have two input, but one of them is zero and the other one, I, I, I wanna write it, but anyway. So what I'm saying, if you have two inputs for end, you have end is this way, okay? So if you have here zero and you have here X, X means whatever it is, zero or one. So it's guaranteed I'm gonna get zero, is that okay? However, however, if you have here one and you have X, this is a truth table, but in a different way, okay? So I'm gonna get X here. So if this one is zero, I'm gonna get zero. If this one is one, I'm gonna get one. Is that okay? I'm gonna tell you why I'm explaining this one. This is very important. We're gonna use it all the time. Any questions? Okay. Um, So you are telling us this is how end works. Is, is that okay? But why, 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 why you, you are telling us it's you, you like to explain this way and we're gonna use it this way. I'm gonna tell you why. Listen to me because this is very important. We're gonna do it all the time. Look here, guys. If you have a register, I have a register, okay? I'm asking you, I wanna clear, I wanna clear this bit. But the other bits don't change. Don't change the other bits. What I'm explaining right now, guys, how, to, how we can use end. End should help me to many, or actually not only end, all the logic operation I'm gonna explain right now are gonna help me to manipulate some bits. So I have, I have, I have a word. I wanna change some bits, but don't change the other bits, okay? So by this way, I can use the logic operation. Let me start with end first, okay? And is used, and is used. If you have a word and I want to clear some bits and don't change other bits. Okay. How can you do that? I'm going to tell you how. Look here, guys. Example I have this register. I want to clear this bit, but don't change the other bits. Look here. That's exactly what happens here. Look, guys. The bit you want to, the bit you want to clear, you have to put zero in the location of this bit. The bit you don't want to change, just, just put one. That's exactly what this one is saying. If I have a bit X and I want to clear this value, so I have to put zero. If you have bit X and you don't want to change this bit, you want to get X after you do the end operation. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to clear this bit. If you want to clear this bit, I'm going to put here zero. Okay. I don't want to change the other bits. I'm going to put one, 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 all the way until the end. And then I'm going to do end operation. Then I'm gonna do end over this. So what I'm gonna get here, guys, I'm gonna get here zero, and then everything is gonna come to here without any change. Okay. So conclusion, conclusion. End operation can be used if you wanna clear some pits. Okay. And you don't want to change other pits. The pits you don't want to change, you have to do end operation with words. Because I don't want to change this one. The bit you want to change, you have to put zero. It can be bit or it can be more. Okay, it's the same idea. It can be more. For example, if you want to clear the first four bits, okay, I'm gonna put zero, zero four times. You got what I'm saying? And so, on. any questions? So again, if you have a register, if you have a register and you want to clear some bits, which which operation you have to use? I have to use eight. Period. Okay. Okay, guys, great. Um, also, and can be used if I want to check, if I want, okay, let me tell you first how this one is important, how, how we are going to use it. Okay, look here, guys. 
as I'm going to explain in chapter three, we have here an external pin. This external bit, you can put here an LED, an LED this way, okay? So actually, if I want to turn, if I want to turn this LED on, or if I want to turn it off, so what happens here, we have a register here, okay? So every bit, every pin, every physical pin here should be connected to one pin. Okay, so if I put here zero, so you are gonna see you are gonna see here zero zero volt. If I put here one, you are gonna see five volt here. It's the same problem. You have a register, you have a register, and then I want to change some bits, and I want to I don't want to change the other bits. Okay, because it's a bit here, the bit I'm gonna change here. This one is gonna change the voltage here. We are gonna do that later. I'm just I'm telling you now why sometimes i have a register why sometimes i want to clear some bits and to don't change the other bits and if you want to do that and and okay any questions so and can be used to ma manipulate bits so not manipulate to clear bits because or or i'm going to explain or for sure shortly or is used if you want to sit if you want to sit some bits and do change the other ones. I'm going to explain it for now, but let, let me finish end first. So again, and it can be used if you want it, if you want a zero, if you want to put zeros and some bits don't change the other bits. Also, also, and can be used if you want to check some bits. So I have a register. Okay, look here, guys, the idea. Okay, so here I have a register this way. Okay, guys, I want to check this bit. What do you mean by check? I want to know if this bit, I want to know if this bit is zero or one. Is that okay? I want to check this bit. How I can do it? So I, I'm only interested in this bit. I'm not, I just want to check what is the value of this bit. Again, here I give you example for one bit, but for sure you can use it for more than one bit. Okay, so how can you do that? Look here, guys, how can you do that? Very important, what I'm explaining right now, very important, we're gonna use it all the time, okay? So look here, guys, I wanna check this bit. Okay, so the bit you wanna check, you have to put here one. So this so this bit is P0, I'm gonna call it P0. The value here is P0, whatever it can be zero, it can be one, I don't know, I wanna check, okay? And then the bits I don't want to check, I'm gonna put zeros. Okay, I'm gonna put zero. So the result I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get one of two results. Okay. For sure, because you put the bits here, you put zeros, for sure you are gonna get zeros here, for sure. Because this is how end works. If you put zero, you're gonna get zero. Okay. However, here, when you put one, when you put one, I'm gonna get the same bit again. So this bit, if, this, if, if P0 is zero, I'm gonna get zero here. If P0 is one, I'm gonna get one here. Again, pretty simple. So what I did, guys, the bits I don't I don't want to check. The bits I don't care about. I'm gonna clear them. That's what I did. I don't care about I don't care about these bits. I'm gonna clear, clear them. The bits I want to check, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy, copy them. So so here, the result I'm gonna get here is gonna be the value of this bit is here and then zero zero zero. Okay, guys. Okay. Then, then I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check this register. If if the value of this register, if the value of the register is zero, that means this bit this bit was zero. Okay, guys. This is this. How can you check? Okay, so again, all what you have to do. Number one, you have to do end operation. Then you have to get the result, and then you have to check the result. If the result equal to zero or not. If the result equal to zero, so the bit was zero. The bit is zero. Okay. Otherwise, the bit is one. Any question? Is that clear? It's different from here. Here, the bit you want to check, you have to put one here. The bit you don't want to check, you put zeros here, and then you can check the result if it's zero or not. If it is zero, that means this bit is zero. Okay, guys? Okay, by the way, if how, how this can be useful? Okay, it can be useful in several ways. Number one, you know, if this bit is one, if I check this bit and I find this bit is one, that means this number is odd. 
So yes. If I want to check this bit here, if this bit is one, that means this number is negative. So I can use this one. If you want to check the last bit, the most significant bit, the most significant bit can tell you if this number is positive or negative, for sure, right? Uh, but the least significant bit can tell you if this number is odd or even, right? So if, the, if there is one here, so the, in the least significant bit, so this is an odd number. If it is zero, so this is an even number. Can anyone guess why? Why I can only get a, an odd number if the first bit here is one, otherwise it should be an even number. Any question? Any answer? Thanks, you are right. Because it, all, all, the first bit two to the power zero, which is one. Second one is two, two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power. So all of them are even, except the one, first one is odd. So if you want to get odd numbers, I have to add this one. If you don't, if you, if you don't have this one, for sure it's guaranteed to be even. Okay. Anyway, okay. This is one way. Maybe this is not a very important thing for end. What is more important, and that's what we're going to do all the time. Listen to me. That's what we're going to do all the time. Okay. Um, here, if you if you have here a switch. Here, okay. So this is switch should give you it's, it's it's external switch connected to the microcontroller okay so if for example you have here five volts so if the switch is connected this way i'm gonna get five volt here but if the switch is connected this way i'm gonna get zero volt here okay so i want to i want to see if the switch is connected or not you have a sw external switch i want to check if the switch is connected or not okay as you will see later what's going to happen is that again there is a register here and the hardware is gonna store a value here in this register. If there is a five volt here, the hardware is gonna put one here. If there is a zero volt here, the hardware is gonna put zero here. So if I wanna if I wanna see if this pin is has five volt or zero volt, now the problem became you have a register. Just to check one bit in this register. This is an example why I will need later. To check one bit to, to store the uh, I see I, I check one bit to see if it is zero or one. Okay. Conclusion before I leave this part, guys. Conclusion. Okay. And very important. And the operation, guys, can be used for one of two things. Number one, I can use and the operation if I have a register and I want to clear some bits and I don't want to change the other bits. Okay. Uh, or I can use end operation if I want to check some bits. So I have, I have a, so if, if I want to, if I have a register and I want to see if this bit, this bit in the register, is that zero or one? I want to check some bits. Okay. Any questions? By the way, as usual, tomorrow we have a lab. This lab is about uh, data transfer instruction, multiplication, uh, and arithmetic instruction. Also, are going to have a quiz on these two topics as well. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the, the quiz is not going to cover logic. The logic of is going to be next week. Okay. Anyway, okay. Any question, guys? For end, before I move to OR. Okay. Now, let's move to OR. You know, in the logic, uh, you know, in, uh, in logic, uh, logic operation, this is how OR works. Okay. So if you have this is the truth, truth, truth table of OR. Okay. Zero or zero, you get zero. Zero or one, you get one. One or zero, you get one. One or one, you get one. Okay. Also, I'm going to explain this truth tab table in a different way, and you will understand. Why I'm going to explain it in a different way? Because I'm going to use it this way. Okay, I'm going to clarify now. Look here, guys. Based on this truth, truth table, if I have, for sure, you know, this is the symbol of OR. So if I have here one input is one. So regardless, whatever the value of the second one, I'm going to, it's guaranteed to get one. Okay, the true, right? So if you look here, it's true. If one input is one, so the second one doesn't matter what, is, what it is. However, if I have one input zero, so actually it's going to be no change. I'm going to get X here. So zero 
no change. One, I'm going to get one. Okay? So, how can we use or? This is similar to what I explained, to, exactly similar to what I did in aim. However, I can use or if I have a register and there is one bit, or for sure more than one bit, I want to set the bit, not clear. Because this one, I can put one here in order to, to set. Zero means no change. Is that okay, guys? So if you have a register this way, okay? And I want to set, not clear, I want to set this bit. I want to set this bit, but I don't want to change the other bits. So in this case, I I'm going to use or operation. The bit I want to set, I have to put one. The bit I don't want to change, I have to put zeros. Okay? Zero or anything, I'm going to get this part again here. No change. One, it's guaranteed to have one. Okay? This is the opposite of what, what I did in end, because that's how end work is. In case of end, one is not is gonna make no change. Zero is gonna make clear the bit because that's how end works. Okay, guys. That's it. This is the only use for or. Usually, that's how we are gonna use it. So or is gonna be used, guys. If you have a register and I ask you wanna change just one bit in this register, okay? So how we are gonna use it in this course? We are gonna use it actually all the time, as I told you. For example, here, if you have an external pin. This external pin is connected to um, an LED this way, and I want to turn it on. I want to turn the LED on. So what's going to happen is that there is hardware connection here, and we have a register. That's it. All what you have to do if this register, if you put one in this bit, in this bit in the register, right? Don't I don't know. I don't know to change other one because if you change the other one, you you may are going to miss. You are going to miss up with the other pins. I just want to change this pin. I don't know to change the other bits. So. Uh, pins so in this case you have a register just in this register in the location of this bit you can put i want to set put here one so once i put here one you can see five volt here to turn the led on any questions okay guys okay now let's move to xor so the conclusion so far guys i explained or I explained n I explained that and and it can be used if you want to check some bits, right? Also, I explained um, uh, and also can be used if you want to clear some bits, or is used if you want to set some bits. I want to set some bits, don't change the other bits. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to XOR. This is how XOR works, guys. Okay, so you already know from before. This is how XOR works, okay? Zero XOR zero is gonna be zero. Zero XOR one is gonna be one. One XOR zero is gonna be one. One and one XOR one is gonna be zero, okay? So sometimes they, they tell the students, if the two bits are the same, right? So you're gonna get zero, right? Uh, if they are different, you are gonna get one. But anyway, I'm not gonna explain this way because I'm not gonna use it this way. I'm gonna explain it in a different way. Look, look how I'm gonna explain it. Look here, guys. For XOR, For XOR, zero. XOR X, no change. You can see here. So if, if, if you can see what happened here. Here. Look here, guys. Zero. Zero. So no change. Here is zero. I'm going to get zero. Here is one. I'm going to get one. Right? So no change. So here in these two cases, when when we have zero, so what I'm gonna get is the same value here, no change. However, if you have one, so you have here one and you have here X. Again, X, X is just a symbol, it can be zero or one, okay? So if you have one and X, so here I'm gonna get X prime. It's the opposite of X. If X is zero, I'm gonna get one. If X is one, I'm gonna get zero, as you see here. Look here, guys, this one is one. And this one is zero, so I'm gonna get the opposite of this one, which is one. Here, one input is one, so what I'm gonna get here is gonna be the opposite of the second one. I'm gonna 
I'm going to use the same everything I explained for end and or I'm going to I'm going to explain it right now. But this one is going to be used for something else. It's not going to be I, I used the end to clear bits. I used to or to set some bits. I'm going to use this one if you want to can anyone answer if you want to okay blank some bits. Hmm? Yeah, if you want to toggle some bits or flip some bits, that's true. Because zero, zero means no change. So if I put zero in any bit, you are not going to change the bit. But if, if you put one, you toggle some bits. Okay, guys? So yes. So if you have a register this way, and I want to toggle, okay, I'm, 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 let, let, I'm going to talk about this bit because if, if every time I explain this bit, maybe a student will think, it's going to work only for this one. So no, so I'm going to use another one. So I want to toggle this one, no change here, OK? So the one you want to toggle, you have to put one here. The ones you don't want to change, by the way, I can, again, I can toggle more than one, right? So I can put zeros here. What's going to happen? Zero, XOR, XOR, any bits, I'm going to get the same bits here. Is that OK? One, XOR is a bit, so I'm going to call this one bit 15, because we started from bit zero until bit 15. So here I'm going to get bit 15 uh, prime. OK, guys. Any questions? Conclusion before I move. Any question before I move forward? Easy, right? Conclusion before I move forward. Number one, guys, I'm explaining here logic operations. Different from what I did before, logic operation here, this operation is going to be done bitwise, bit by bit. OK? Uh, this number one. Number two. I explained end, and I told you very important to understand. And it can be used if you wanna. Number one, if you wanna clear some bits, right? Or if you wanna check some bits. Okay. So, for example, if you uh, if you wanna if you uh, if you wanna check this bit is at zero or one. Okay. Some bits. Uh, or is used if you wanna if you wanna set some bits and do change the other ones okay uh so xor is going to be used if you want to flip some bits so so this these three logic operations are are going to be used if you want to manipulate manipulate some bits don't change the other bits so manipulate here means manipulate means you can set up set some bits you can kill some bits you can toggle some bits and do change the other ones okay anyway now let's see what what instructions we have by the way before i also in C language, as I'm going to explain right now, this is a symbol if you want to do bitwise and this is a symbol for or bitwise for or and this is the symbol you, uh, the operator you have to use for XOR. Okay, let's see what instruction we have and then I'm going to explain them uh, some. So here we have here end, so you can use the word end. Also, you can you can add s by the way, if you if you are interested, if you, if you if you are if you are. Uh, if you want to change the register, uh, sorry, the flex, you can use a let, letter S, as you know, as I said. So anyway, so uh, again, this is true for most, most of the instructions we have, okay? So I, I'm not going to keep saying add S, add S, but you should keep in mind for most of the instruction we have, if you add S, so you are going to change, you are going to update, flex, or this instruction is going to update the flex. So this one, actually, what this instruction is going to do, is going to do, end bit by bit end and then the result is going to be stored here the result is going to be stored this is for or o r r so this one is going to do bit by bit or here as you see here the result is going to come here this one is for x or x or so this one actually actually was going to do is going to do x or here okay bit by bit x or it's going to store the result here okay guys we have two more instruction they are very close to what I explained, but there is a small difference. I'm going to tell you why. So we have here or, this is or, we have or not, or not. So what this one is going to do, or, or actually here, as you see, are going to do or uh, this one to this one. But here, or not, so you actually, the second operation here, you are going to, you are going to, you are going to flip. You are going to calculate the one's complement here. You see the difference between, sorry, I don't, <laughs> The pin is not working. I'm doing my best here, but you can see the difference, right? So this one here, you do bit by bit uh, or, okay? But this one between this one and this one, but actually here, you are gonna do bit by bit or to the 
to the um, the one's complement of this one. Is that okay? For sure, you are not going to change this one. So this instruction does not change this one, but uh, it changes for sure the result is going to be stored. Okay. okay. We have another one here. It's called bit clear. Bit clear. This one is similar to end. Is similar to end, but actually it's going to do end with the with the one's complement of the second operator. Okay. So pretty simple. We have two instruction. We have two two operators. Two operators. So we have an instruction to do end. We have another one to get the one's complement of the second one, and then do end. I'm going to tell you why. I mean, mean, mean it something like that. Any questions? Okay. So I give you examples. Okay. So here I give you some example to the instruction. So you can just say end R0, R1, R2. So you are going to do, actually, that's what you are going to do. You are going to do end here, store the result here. You are going to do or here, store the result here. XOR, you are going to do XOR here, store the result here. What, what you are going to do here, guys, I'm going to do or, but this or is going to be between R1 and the one's complement of R2, one's complement of R2. So you have to get, yeah, so you have, you have to, so yeah, uh, you have you have to get the one's complement of R2, okay? It's the same thing for bit clear. So here it's, it's going to, you are going to do end operation between R1 and the one's complement of R2. Yeah, I don't need to go through this one. That's very easy, right? Right. So here, if you have here R zero, R one, and then you can bit by bit. So this is how it is. One and one is one. Zero and one is zero, and so on. So this is the result you are going to get of this operation. Uh, this instruction. Is that any questions? That's very easy, right? This also very easy. Just do uh, or operation. Okay. This one for XOR. As I told you, XOR can be very. As I explained to you before. For example, here. Uh, I told you, if you have here one, it, one is going to flip the bit. So if the bit is one, I'm going to get here zero. Zero means no change. Zero, zero, so I'm going to get here the same number here. One here means I'm going to flip the bit. Zero, no change. One is going to flip the bits and so on. Okay, guys. This one, as I told you, this one is going to do or, but it's going to do or with, with uh, one's complement of this one. So as you see here in this example, this is R1 is here. So I'm going to calculate the one's complement of this one, as you see here. And then I'm going to do OR between these two. OR. Okay. And this is the result. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Look here, guys. Um, I told you. Now I want to answer the question why you have here end, end between two register. And another end, this one, we call it bit clear, but it is end between one register and the opposite of the other one. The, the, it's not the opposite. It's the one's complement of the other one. Same thing for OR. You have you can do OR between two registers or OR between one register and the one's complement of the second one. So I'm going to explain why, what, or how can we use, or how, how we can use them. Okay, I'm going to tell you what is the trick here. Okay, look, look, guys, what is the trick here? So the trick is, or, or the main point here, or how, how the people like to use it, okay? The way the people like to use it, look here, guys, when I do end, I told you in case of end, zero, end, and x, I'm going to get zero, okay? And then uh, one and x, okay? So I'm going to get here what? I'm going to get here one, so, so, okay? So, uh, sorry, I'm going to get x. So that means one, one means no change. So if you want, if you don't want to change some bits, you have to put one, right? So if you put zero, so the, uh, in some bits, these are, these are the bits I want to clear. Is that okay? Make sense? That's what I explained. If you come to OR, I'm going to use the opposite. Okay, Let, let's see OR. In case of OR, in case of OR. So if I put here one, so I'm going to get one, if you put zero, x, I'm going to get x. OK, so here, zero means zero means no change here. Here, zero, zero, no change. Here, here one, no change. You got what I'm saying? That's how it is, right? That's how it, they work. OK, people don't like to make it this way. OK, uh, people. Our usually what we do, 
So what is the problem? The problem is that it's not, they are not the same. So it's gonna be confusing for the people or a little bit confusing because here one is no change, here zero is no change. Okay, if you wanna use it this way, it's okay, but we can make it easier somehow. The way we make it easier, we make, we make something, we call it a mask. So what is a mask? Okay, look here, guys. We we do we have we we use usually the we use the term mask. I'm gonna tell you what mask means. Look here, guys. So if mask means this is a mask, in this mask, the bits you want to change, either using using this one or using this one, you can mark these bits by once all the time, all the time. So for example. I want to change, I want to change this bit. So I'm going to put one here because this one like a mark, but I don't know change this, change this bit, so I'm going to use zero. This is the idea of a mask. So mask means, so mask means uh, that it's a number, right? In this number, the bits you don't, the bits you don't want to change, put zeros. The bits you want to change, put ones. So one is going to mark. So it's gonna be mark, yeah. I'm interested in this bit, in this bit, in this bit, but I'm not interested in the other bit. If this is the case, you have to put one, 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 zero, zero. Is that okay? But there is a problem. It has the problem is that if 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 you if you're using or okay, this one is gonna work in case of or why? Because in case of or zero is gonna make no change, one is gonna sit, sit some bit. So this this mess is a format of this mess should be okay. If you want to set some bits, however, in case of uh, if you want to clear some bits, in case of end, if you want to clear some bits, it's not going to work, right? Because as you see here, in case of in case of end, zero should uh, one should be no change, right? I want to use only one mask all the time, okay? I don't want to say your mask. If you are using end, your mask if it's a bits you want you don't want to change, you put one, and but if you use all. The bits you don't change put zero. No, I'm gonna use only one one way. Always what, what, what you don't want to change, put zero. Always what you want to change, just put one. Okay, guys. Okay, if you wanna if you wanna keep it this way, all what you have to do is that something very simple. Okay, all what you have to do is that I can use normal or with this format of the mask, it's gonna work. However, for end, please don't use the normal end. Use the end that is gonna flip the second one so that it can work. You understand what I'm saying? So if you flip this one in case of end, so it's gonna become zero, zero, one, 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 one. So one here is gonna be no change. Zero, zero are gonna change the, the first two bits. Okay, guys? Again, I wanna, you understand what, what I wanna say? You, so that it's a format of the mask is gonna be uh, fixed, it, okay? Regardless, if you wanna set some bits, okay, so always, the bits I want to change, I'm going to put ones. Okay. The bits I don't want to change, always I'm going to put zeros. So, in order to make it work, in case of or, just use normal or. But in case of end, you have to use end. We have two versions of end, as I told you. We have end, normal end, and we have another end that is going to flip the second operator. Okay. I think I'm explaining this concept here. Okay. So, I'm explaining this concept here. So, guys, here. Uh, so here we have we have what we call a mask. So in this mask, as you see here, or if, if you put a mask this way, what it means? It means I wanna I wanna change these two bits, but I don't want to change the other bits here. Is that okay? So if what do you mean what, what do you mean we wanna change? Okay, if you if you wanna if you wanna set the bits, okay. So I can simply use or I can use or between between the register. I'm I'm having here the register and and this mask, I can use or, okay? However, in case of end, because that's how end works, you have, this, this one should be zeros. And this one, the ones you don't change should be one. That's why in this case, you have to use big, big, big clear. So big clear is here, guys, as I told you, this is just a normal end, normal end, but this end is gonna calculate the one's complement of this one, okay? Any questions? Very important to this lecture, you should understand how we're gonna use end later. We're gonna do it all the time. How we're gonna use or, how we're gonna use XOR. We're gonna do it all the time, okay? Also here, I wanna explain guys in C language. 
if you want to do the same thing with C language, I told you this, this is the operator uh, or this is the symbol for, for end, right? This one here for or, bit twice, bit by bit. And this one for XOR. I don't want to be confused. This is, this operators, we call it bit operators, bit, bit by bit. However, we have a very close operator you should have used before. We call it Boolean operator. They are completely different. They are completely different. So this one, a Boolean operator. This here, a Boolean operator. This one is a Boolean. This one has nothing to do with this one. Completely different. This one also different from this one and so on. Okay. Anyway, so here I'm going to use this one. This one, we are going to use this one, guys, in case of you, if you want to do logic operation bit by bit. But this, we used this operator before in case of condition. You remember when you did conditions, something like that. If you say if a is greater than five and B is equal to one. So in this case, you have to use the Boolean operator. So again, I want you to understand uh, this operate the Boolean, the Boolean operators are used in case of you have conditions, but this, this, this one, this bit, bit, bit by bit or bitwise, okay? This is, or if you build a, if you build a condition like this one, A is greater than five or B is equal to one. This is not, not. Okay, that means this, this condition is true if a, if it is false that a is greater than five. It's not true if it is not a greater than five. Anyway, okay, guys, you understand the difference between this operator and this operator? Okay. Um, I just here give you, um, yeah. Yeah, here I give you just in, um, in C language. For example, if you, in C language, if, if this is how can you use it in C language, okay. So you can have here a variable, variable, and then you put the operator here. Same thing for this one, this one for X or. By the way, in C language, if you wanna, if you wanna do not, once complement, you have to use this operator. You have to use this symbol if you wanna do once complement. So if, as you see here, if uh, if the original if this is the original value of n, if you flip, if you so after you do this operation. You flip the pizza, so you are gonna, it's, this is the result you will get, okay? So now, this is how can you do it in C language? For, forget the shift for now, because that's what, this is the topic, so uh, the shift operator, so this is the topic of the next section. Any question, guys? But actually, I'm gonna use it here, so let me explain it, okay? Um, so actually here, when you have, for example, in this symbol one, what it means? It means n is a variable n is going to be shifted to the right, to the right only one time. Okay, but if it is something like the other way, if the direction is this way, also one, for example, that means n is going to be shifted to the left this way. Okay, what what, what do you mean by shifted? So again, so this. If, if it is this way, if, 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 if this is this way, so that means it's shifted to the right. If it is this way, that means it's shifted to the left, okay? And then the number you are using here is gonna tell, it's gonna tell how many shifts you wanna make, shifts. So what do you mean by shift? Okay, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you a quick example. I'm gonna tell you what I mean by shift, very simple. So for example, I'm gonna give you like, I'm not gonna make uh, 32 bits, so I'm gonna make only eight bits, but it's the same idea. For example, if you have something like that, one, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one. Okay. So if I want to shift it to the right only one time, you know what's going to happen? Okay. I'm going to tell you what happened. So actually, this one, the first one here is going to go to the, the carry flag. So the carry flag is going to have one. Okay. And and bit bit number one is going to be now bit number uh, number zero. Bit number two is gonna be, be bit. So the position every bit is gonna be shifted, okay? So this one is gonna come here, and then this one is gonna come here, and this one is gonna come here, this one is gonna come here, and then I have one, and now I have empty place here, I'm gonna shift to zero. Again, what, what shift means? You have bits, right? So every bit is gonna be shifted to the next location. So, Bit number five is gonna to come to the location, bit number four. Bit number four is gonna to go to four, uh, three, and so on. By this way, I'm gonna input a new bit, and this one bit is gonna exit, okay? The bit that's gonna exit is 
it's going to go to carry always with input zero because this is exactly what happens. So you see here, guys, this is uh, this is uh, the five uh, the five here. So I'm having here. I'm going to input zero here, and this one is going to come shifted. This is going to shift it, shift it, shift it, shift it, and the first one here is going to go to the carry. This is not a go direction. This is shift right. The other operator shift left. For sure, I'm going to explain in details. We have uh, we have uh, instructions. I'm going to teach in the next section to shift. Also, we, we should learn why 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 you need to shift. What is the idea? But for sure, we're going to teach. Any questions? So tomorrow we have a lab about data transfer and multiplication and addition. Also, we have a quiz. Okay. Uh, by the way, in the lab, I'm just trying to help you. That's why I give you some, some hint, okay? I'm gonna tell you, yeah, you can do this way. However, if you wanna do it in a different way, I'm totally fine. You get what I'm saying? So in the lab, I give you some steps. I suggest some steps, but you don't need to, it's not a must to, to use these steps. If you have, if you can do it in a, as long, this is my philosophy. As long as it, it works, I'm totally fine, why not? There are different ways to do things, there are different ways, okay?